Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is happening. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't expect anything less. Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm my Chow. And thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing all right. My Chow, hello, or rather, hello. I should say, ahoy. Ahoy, indeed. Good <laughs> yeah. morrow. <laughs> yes, that's right. Good morrow, sir. Um... You seem pretty, yeah, pretty festive today. I'm not, uh, we'll, we'll get into that uh, in a little bit, but um, you're looking pretty good out there. Yeah. Yeah, I got all this over the weekend. We'll talk about that in a bit. I will let you know this, this hat's coming off at some point. <laughs> Is it a I bit top most... heavy or just, uh, how, how's it, how's it suiting you? Just such a big hat. Mm, yes very like much so it, it it is yeah it is a challenge to kind of fit this uh in the frame properly but uh you know we got to do it and uh we got to sh- serve the people and show them what it's all about so it's looking pretty good um i'll tell you like a guy a man in uniform so i think he's doing it for me <laughs> oh is that, is that so? <laughs> there you go <laughs> the moment it comes off it's you know uh, anyway no, you're looking. Very this is looking good. Um, let's see here. What what's going on, my child? I mean, uh, you know, uh, attire aside. I mean, uh, how, how you doing? Okay. You know, Ren Fair was over the weekend. We'll talk about that later. But other than that, it's been pretty chill. Uh, I may or may not have a kidney stone. I don't know. Really? Yeah. It, it's like it's whenever been- we're here. I mean, we we yeah, we talk about all these medical ailments. You know. Um, that either of us is going through. I don't know. I think you more than I at this point, but yeah, uh, I think so. But, uh, you know, what, what's going on? What do you, what do you think? So, cause I haven't drank like over the weekend, Ren Fair weekend. Um, I also went to work the day after and I feel like I didn't drink enough water throughout these the last week or so. Okay. It's been mostly sodas and or energy drinks. Okay, but in the course of a week, I mean, you think, uh, you know, kidney stones going to start forming? I don't know. I'm not a medical professional here, but. Uh... I don't know. I assume so because, I don't know, my sister had kidney stones when she was younger because she didn't drink any water and it was all soda. Yeah, I mean, that, so that, that that's, that's a problem. Of. That's a problem. So, um, I mean, I remember I, I went through a similar thing. I was, drink, I was not drinking enough water. I was eating a lot of. Uh, um, I don't know, just a lot of different types of, uh, high salty foods or, you know, things like that. And, uh, I ended up with, uh, a gallstones. The gall. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was quite an adventure, but, um, yeah, kidney stones I hear are no joke. So, um, I would not recommend, even though I've not uh, experienced that. Same. I would also not recommend because I, I don't know if it's a kidney stone. I assume it is. I mean, are you um, starting to feel like some sort of pain or like discomfort oh, or yeah. something? Yeah. Yeah, it started like it started on Monday. Honestly, it's just oh. on my back. Like, oh, I, where is your kidney exactly? It, it is towards the back. I mean, the back, lower back, right? Yeah, like on the sides. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, it been feeling uh, since Monday. I see. Well, um, I'm not sure why we're here today, <laughs> but um, I hope that it can be resolved by uh, very soon. I mean, well, kidney stones just pass, right? As long as they're not too big. Uh, I mean, they can, but uh, I, I, you know, it depends on the severity, like how long it's been taken. Yeah. I don't know. We're again, we're talking way outside our uh, our knowledge base, which is usually zero. But yeah, exactly. Um, I I don't know. I I would just say uh, for now, if you can get some hold of cranberry juice, just uh, chug a gallon mm. of that, and um, try to try to it's you know eliminate that way. Cranberry juice, isn't it? Uh, I don't think it's ever too late, but it might take longer depending on how long it's, uh, you know, festering, you know, over there. Mm. So, uh, mm. if you can get your hands on that, that'd be good. But I think it'd also be good to get a hold of a medical professional. Um, yeah, I was thinking of, if, if it's still off by Friday, I'll probably go to urgent care. I think, uh, we're going to need some follow up on this. Um, if, uh, if you're still around by then, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. 
I, I don't know anyone personally. I can't recall um, who's experienced that uh, particular thing. I don't know if you if you do. Yeah, just my sister. She's the only one I know who's had kidney stones okay. before. Okay. And uh, tell me again how she dealt with that. Uh, honestly, I don't remember. This was like I was young, as in preteen, I think. So it's mm-hmm. been 20 ish years. Oh, okay. All right. So she learned better. Uh, I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly. Um, I don't, I remember they went to the doctor, but I think it just passed on. Like I, they might've given her something to help it pass faster, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it, she just passed it on her own. Wow. Oh, um, yeah. again, it can, um, and, but I think, you know, these fluids, uh, will help to help pass if you try to do it that way. Mm. But again, we don't know for sure, depending on, um, you know, how it's formed or whatever uh, at this point. Um, but okay, well, good luck to you. And um, uh, good morrow. I ain't no wedding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Um, we'll find out if we're if we see you next uh, next time. This is my is all a, a ploy. Maybe, maybe <laughs> this is the way that you get out. <laughs> This is this just a actually not, I have no discomfort whatsoever. I'm just telling you now. So yeah, so like, oh, I can't do this anymore. You know, I, you know, I have doctor's <laughs> orders. You know, I have to I have yeah. bed rest and all that. You know. Yeah. On more interesting news, did you know there's a nitro Pepsi? Uh, no, I don't know what that is. It's like a it's a Pepsi that's infused with nitrogen. Oh, you have it so on it- hand. Oh yeah. Okay. This, this. Okay. I don't know if this is quite the way. It's not going to help. It's not going to help. <laughs> not- but I, I'm here for it. I don't care. I want it. Okay. I mean, um. Okay. Uh, well, it's like, one, it's like those folks with gout. They will accept the consequences for one, every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it blasts off their their toe, then sure. Yeah. You know, as long as it tastes good, and you know, oh, you got medication and whatever, you can control it. Sure. Why not? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a pill for everything these days, right? Just uh, fix it right up. So, uh, well, tell me, I don't know. Is that a new thing? This Nitro Pepsi or? um... I don't know if it's new. I've just recently found it. But so it's like, you know how they have Nitro Cold Brews for coffee or Nitro uh, IPAs for beer? I don't know what that is. I'm so out of it in that regard. Is it it Nitro? Not not even Cold Brew? I know Cold Brew. I don't know Nitro Cold Brew. Uh, oh yeah, it's just. Well, what 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 is the nitro part of it? Like, what is this like a uh, Fast and Furious? Nitrogen, I mean, what yes, are we talking yeah. about? Is yeah, it basically like they they infuse it with nitrogen gas? Uh, like for at least for beers, uh, from what I read, it's they once it's been made and then like contain put in a container, they mm-hmm. fill the container with nitrogen mm-hmm. from there. Mm-hmm. And so it's usually about. I mean, what is it supposed to do? It's so, it, you know, it's another car- form of carbonation, I guess, right? This, uh, yeah. Instead of using um, CO2, I suppose. Well, that, that forms naturally, but nitrogen, they just, they insert it into the mix just to make it different. Uh, and the point of it is, I don't know, well, I don't know if that's the point, but it leads to like a, a creamy mouthfeel, if you will. Oh, that's a nice way to say it. Yes. Let's, uh, a creamy mouth feel. Yeah. The people love yeah. that. Hell yeah. It's great. That's, it just, it makes it smoother. I see. Well, um, are you going to try it out, uh, for the people? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You gotta, op- you gotta open the can. You gotta pour it hard. Yeah. Uh, oh God. That almost went terribly. Mm-hmm. It seems yeah. like you've gotten a special, like just vessel just for this. It's like a well, very no, nice, had it's very nice shape in glass. Maybe uh, I don't know if it's meant to be optimized for these uh, carbonated fizzy drinks, but it looks pretty good. Yeah, man, I've had this glass. That's my beer glass. So is but it? Um, all right, go ahead and gradient. look at that. Look at that. Look at that head. I can see and that. It's, just... it's like a. It's like a dark ale. You know. Yeah, honestly, that's what it turns into. into. But like, it's nice and it feels great to drink and it tastes good. All right. And then the foam disappears over time too. So, well, you better get on it or not. I, okay. It's good. Very smooth. I like it. What is the flavor we're looking at? Is this like a regular Pepsi flavor that just has nitrogen? 
So, Basically, so yeah. you you mentioned a smooth, like a creamy mouth feel. Yeah. So what? So how does how? What are you? Yeah. What are you contrasting like between that and like a regular cola or Pepsi or something? Because you know how like most uh, we'll say like first sodas. If you put it under your tongue, you feel like a whole burning kind of sensation. Everyone kind of right, like okay. it, it tingles. Mm-hmm. This doesn't do that at all. Interesting. Okay. Like it doesn't burn any way down. Good. So, Sorry. so you prefer this? It seems. Yeah, but it's stupidly well. Not about stupidly more expensive, but it is more expensive. Oh, so where do you find this? I don't know. I found it like once, like randomly. Okay. Does it come as yeah. uh, just a single a thing, or is it like a four? Oh, okay, all right. They they do sell singles. At least the first time I had it, it was singles. But yeah, I saw four pack. Okay, I mean this isn't the best comparison, but you know, uh, on Amazon there's a a twelve pack for about twenty three dollars of a night of the nitro pips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. How of, much was of it? a of a variety pack? So you got uh, different flavors, which what? includes. Well, I think it's just like the, uh, I don't even know. I don't know. It just says variety. Oh, pack. they had the vanilla one. Yes. I did have that. Okay. Uh, and do then, not, which I do want to try. Do what? not shake the can. No, no, yeah. no, no. You, you know, it also has nitrogen. Um, uh, my Costco tire center. Yeah. So <laughs> that. Uh, see, you're gonna make your own alcohol, and or you're gonna make your own soda, and then I don't see why not. I mean, like you know, I'm I'm just gonna go to Costco. I'm just gonna fill up on on my tires, and yeah. So those uh those tire pumps that they have there, they're nitrogen uh, pumps. So I think um, I think I might get. I think because uh, it's lighter or something. Mm-hmm. They're smaller, you know, the molecules and whatnot, so they're lighter, and so I think mm-hmm. it's supposed to promote just a better. I don't know. I, I'm not oh, a scientist. No. I have no idea. It's all a scam, okay? <laughs> it's all just one marketing scam, all right? That is that so? But um, you know, I, nitrogen's all around us anyway. I think like eighty percent mm-hmm. of the the air is nitrogen anyway. So um, seventy. Oh okay, well, there you go. See, even more so. See, um, so I don't know. We're just really going off on this real odd kind of tangent here, but um, maybe it's skeptical. Yeah, thank you. Maybe uh maybe that should be the next sponsor for us. I don't know. Um well right on. I, I hope you enjoy that. Uh but I hope you don't um I hope you don't explode. Let's put it that way. Probably so, will. Hmm. Uh okay, well let's follow up on that um next time. So all right. I I was um not not as exciting, actually not even remotely, you know, yeah, exciting or whatever at all but i i did want to mention you know you i'm sure you know hopefully you are aware i'm sure many are aware of um you know the news and the the ongoing saga of um you know the 99 cent store closures oh i actually yeah. didn't don't know what's up what's different they're, they're closing okay i know that part like all stores but I mean, that's it. You? No, oh, okay. I mean, they, they're closing. You said ongoing saga. I thought there was more to it. I think that's ongoing. The ongoing is that they're closing. But there's no updates. So, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The update is that they're going to close. Yeah, yeah. Liquidation sales galore. I mean, I, I don't know if you visited a 99 cent store recently. I haven't been able to, but um, um, I, I only wanted to bring it up actually only because, uh, you know, it just reminds me of... um. You know the days in high school, with um, mm. with uh, with Chris, and we would uh, we would walk home, and uh, you know we mm-hmm. we would go mm-hmm. to on the way home we would walk home, and uh, you know one of the uh, the parts in in our path is like a hill, basically. You know, one of the streets we go up is just this hill, and so you know it wasn't our favorite thing to do, and um, we would pass by uh, the ninety nine cent store. Uh, in Silver Lake on Sunset, and so we would uh, we would go there and we would buy snacks to uh, <laughs> yeah. to provide us you know energy you know and uh, and sustenance as we had to traverse and uh, and and conquer really that 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 really large hill. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's steep, right? It is very. I will. I will give you yeah. that. It's a steep hill, and it's yeah. tall. Like yeah. it's a bitch. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, as some uh, growing young boys, I mean, I think it it was just uh, it was just right to provide enough energy to to conquer that. So, um, but yeah, we would uh, particularly we would um, we would get these packs of uh, fig newtons. It's like, and it's a dollar, literally a dollar. You did not buy fig newtons. Were they not legally distinct fig Newtons? Um, what would they call them then? I don't remember. Oh, I don't know, but just specifically. Well, not. I thought they they had. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe some um, store brand alternative or mm-hmm. something. Um, but I'm sure they had like brand name as well. Oh, did they? I don't, um, I don't, I don't now. I don't remember. Shoot, now that's lost to time. Hey, if you guys know um, the uh, the brands offered as Fig Newtons at the 99 cent store, please uh, email us at hi at dumbandhungry.com and we can get to the bottom of that. But it doesn't matter because we're closing anyway. But um, good times, good times. So we would just Where's get you know, like over easily what? Maybe a thousand calories and Fig mm-hmm. Newtons or something. Uh <laughs> Just to help us over that all at once, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you don't want to put it to waste, right? I mean, you can eat it after another day. I I don't think that's how it works. It still isn't how it works. With this is it? No. I'm just doing some searching, and like I'm just coming across just pictures of fig newtons. I mean, well, maybe it was, maybe they were fig newtons then. I don't know. I thought they weren't. I thought they were like. No, you're probably like, right. I just, I don't know what the, uh, the alternative was. I mean, you know, they just call them like fig something. Most likely. Big bar, big units. I don't know. Fruit bar even. Yeah. But I mean, you know, the 99 cent store was, um, I don't know. It was a great place. Definitely underrated, um, you know, to get, get a good grocery haul actually. I mean, I think there was no, always really. that perception that, you know, um, it, it, they would, you know, give old products, expired products or things like that. Mm. That's why they're so cheap. But no, I mean, it's just part of their supply chain. Like they're able to get whatever quantity at this and you know, give it at this price. I mean, granted, maybe they weren't like produce wise, maybe it wasn't the best, but, you know, mm. it made it accessible. And it's not like it's, you know, yeah, it wasn't going to get you sick. But um, I mean, it, it really helped a lot. I mean, it's going to be a big a big deal i think um once everything like closes for for real i mean this is this is probably worse personally than um you know the dollar tree increasing prices to like a buck 25 mm. so uh, yeah because it just starts closing there's people losing jobs yeah although just, i think gavin newsom said something as well about trying to find a place for people then on their feet at I see. Closures. Yeah, I think the different, uh, lo- you know, different levels of government, state and local, I think they're trying to provide resources, you know, for those employment yeah. wise, you know, impacted. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not just the consumers, it's it's the people that work there, too. It's uh, sad, really. Yeah, um, I mean, 99 cent stores where all your county employees go when they have to do a birthday thing and need decorations. It's always nine cents though. <laughs> they come in clutch. Um, mm-hmm. You can count on them. Yeah, I mean it's it's really something. So they're serve. Yeah, they're serving uh serving the county. They're sponsoring the county. They're sponsoring high school kids. I mean they're just. Yeah. I mean they're just uh they're just all over the place. So it'll be it'll be a real sad day once that day officially comes. I mean it's already started, you know. But yeah. I think. Uh, I think the official last day is like some, uh, like in June, early June. Like that's when it's like, mm. that's it. That's it. Damn, that's even closer than I thought. Mm-hmm. So I, I doubt they have any more of those figs out there uh, at the stores to pick up. But um, Probably the first thing to go. I think so. I think so. Because everyone needs to go up that, that hill. That so. stupid hill. <laughs> so um, again, uh, probably not as dramatic as uh, a possible kidney stone, but uh, still, still important news nevertheless. Great. Um, so, with that said, I th- as as you said, I think um, otherwise, mm-hmm. I think th- things have been pretty chill for us. Not not too many things. 
as much going on. Um, at least, uh, at least until, you know, uh, the topics at hand, but, you mm-hmm. know, speaking of food and whatnot, actually be, before we even get more into that, I think you were showing us a little bit, showcasing a little bit, uh, before, uh, the show about some snacks and, and things to snack on. Um, so why don't you share that with us? There are no more, but, oh, oh, was, uh... that was just that, that was less than like 20 minutes ago. Well, yeah. What do you want me to do? I'm, I was hungry. I, I, but I didn't even see. I didn't see anything. Oh, really? I you didn't see me eating it. I've been eating it this whole time. Even now? Yeah. On oh. camera. Oh. I. Oh. I didn't notice <laughs> at all. Oh, nice. I guess we'll have to play back. I mean, you know, when I when I edit this and whatever, yeah. and put this up, yeah, I guess I will see. All right, just tell us what what was on there. I don't I don't even know now. Pizza rolls, Totino's pizza rolls. Ah, okay. Never go wrong with that. Okay, but yeah. Also, chicken nuggets, the Tyson food chicken nuggets, whatever they had at Costco. Mm-hmm. Oh, Tyson. Apparently, mm-hmm. Trader Joe's has a an organic Kansas style barbecue sauce. Oh, okay, yeah. And that's not bad. So you just uh, douse that uh, the, oh, the yeah. pizza rolls and stuff in there. Yeah, that's not good. the pizza rolls, just the just oh. the chicken nuggets. Oh, I'm sorry. Pizza rolls, I don't know. Mm. It's like what's it called? I don't know. Because I grew up with McDonald's chicken nuggets, right? Right. And my parents would always get the barbecue sauce. Mm-hmm. So if I'm eating nuggets, I want barbecue sauce. It's just the only way I know how these days. Yeah. Personally, yeah, I think I think the barbecue sauce is the superior sauce. I Is mean, from uh, okay. probably, you know, it comes close as like the honey mustard, right? I mean, those mm. two probably goes, goes ha- uh, neck and neck, but yeah, I think I, I'm partial towards, uh, the barbecue sauce. So, okay. I mean, did part- you ever have the, wa- the, uh, did you ever have the whack Donald sauce? When no, I didn't. That? No, no. Um, neither did I. Oh, that's too bad. I was curious. Um, I forgot about it. Honestly, it's too bad. Hey, if any of you have tried the Wick Donald sauce, please let us know at hi at dumbandhungry.com. Um, well, speaking of food, uh, let's continue to talk about it. And we want to thank our few and only fans for joining us again as we talk about our food adventures, the local spots and pop-ups and everything in between with uh, good food and good people. Actually, today, um, you know, it, it, there's still some, you know, food things to talk about, but really this is more of a, a larger event that we wanted to discuss that uh, we both uh, went to recently and um, something I haven't done before, but my chow is well versed in and very familiar with. So um, let's get right into it. So my chow, what the heck are we talking about here? We did the Ren Fair this weekend, the Renaissance Fair, because uh, it's back. It's been about three weeks now this year and then three more weeks to go. So for anyone who is still interested, it's it ends the weekend before Memorial Day weekend. Um, and it's just if you're into high fantasy, the Renaissance Fair is what you a lot of like, I don't know. It's at the Santa Fe Dam in Irwindale, and it's just they take over a whole section of the park, a um, bunch of stalls, uh, not necessarily stalls, but more like pop up shops kind of. Uh, a lot of old timey artisan goods, hand, fresh uh, homemade bread. Um, excuse me. Uh, what is it? Lots of woodworked items, a lot of metalwork items. Um, a lot of show. There are a few shows going around. They're there every year. Like Mooney specifically, he's one of the comedians. He's he's one of the bigger draws every year, which is nice. Um, there's a guy doing Dungeons and Shakespeare, which is really cool. And of course, there's, you know, uh, different game, different activities you could do archery, uh, axe throwing, knife throwing, other arcade, uh, arcade games such as there was a turtle race. Never forget the turtle race. Um, and like catapult, catapult throwing where you throw them at pirates, like you, you catapult cats to pirates stuff, of course. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? Never forget the wenches. Very important. Um, but yeah, it's a thing that happens every year. I'm glad that they're doing it again. I think two years ago was when they restarted since the pandemic. So, so 
you know, there's a lot that's going on, a lot of activities, a lot of things to do and see. But um, mm-hmm. it seems uh, so. So a Renaissance fair is, um, I mean, I guess it's in the name. It's uh, it's like this. It's a fair. It's a big event that's themed around the Renaissance, um, yeah. medieval yeah. period, whatever, you know, right? Yeah. Right Both. Of, yeah. Right past the dark ages, lots of Shakespeare references. Yes. Um, I don't, I don't even remember what, um, yeah. So you, that's right. That's a good point. So the Renaissance is like this. What does it mean again? Is it like, uh, awakening enlightenment? Something like that. Yeah. I don't remember. But it's after like half the people died in Europe from the, you know. Yes, the plague. Right. The and uh, plague. And uh, set back science for like a thousand years or something. Damn, I think. Well. Um, but, you know, this is obviously not the only, you know, fair uh, around, but I think it's, uh, I think it's the fair for what? The SoCal. greater LA, greater LA area, SoCal? Okay. Yeah. I think SoCal in general. No I don't know about anything in like San Diego or on the way down there. So, so more precisely, it's called the original Renaissance pleasure fair and that's fair spelled F A I R E. Ye old spelling. That's right. Uh, very historically, you know, accurate spelling. Um, so tell me, I mean, like how long have you been going to the Renaissance fair? I think I started in 2017, like once a year, um, since Maybe it was 2018. Mm -hmm. I think it was like 2018, 2019. And then nothing in 2020, 21. Uh, About five years then, if you exclude pandemic years. So it's, uh, I mean, is something you come across or like something like someone told you about? Or I mean. uh, I mean, you know, back in the day when I used to see commercials, um, I would always see commercials, but it never interested me until friends of mine decided to go. Like, they're the ones who, like Olivia specifically, she's one of the people who I who are like, oh yeah, you should go, it's fun. If you're into like any high fantasy thing mm-hmm. or like old timing stuff, it'll. It, she said I would enjoy it. Like a lot of D and D references there too. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I went that I went that year with them, and I've been going ever since. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I guess obviously, um, except for the years during uh, COVID, I guess you know they had to. Close those down or something, right? I mean, they didn't do that. Yeah. Long. Okay. Not nothing. Yeah. Two years off, three years maybe. But um, I mean, yeah. When when you um, I mean, when we talk rent, you know, rent fair. When we talk Renaissance, talk medieval. I mean, when mm-hmm. you step in there, I mean, you're really immersed. It seems into. Oh that yeah, like whole lots theme. of lots of the I don't know if actors. I suppose they're very. It's all role playing. As soon like even bag check, instantly. Um, because when we went through. Uh, Oli had a um, a keychain with the mm-hmm. mimic from Free Ren on her bag. What uh, is that? So a mimic is like a, a a treasure chest creature. It pretends to be a treasure chest to uh, ensnare adventures to mm-hmm. eat them, basically. Okay. Um, so she had a mimic keychain on her on her bag, and then like the people at Bag Tech were like, "Oh, she's a mimic wrangler. She's too powerful. Get away from us," kind of thing. Huh. Which is really cool. Speaking of which, what do we got here? It seems like another More delivery. <laughs> Yay! Oh man, yeah, she knows you gotta you gotta keep going. You need your energy. Um, so that's good. But I mean, yeah. yeah so like I said, uh, like you said, it's. Um, I mean, it's really. I mean, even even now, um, as yourself, I mean, you are. I mean, you not just you, but majority of people who attend this they um they dress for the occasion i mean they go Mm -hmm. all out yeah i mean this is like you know um uh ax i I think it's like con level right ax for 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 the renaissance for the medieval times it seems Mm -hmm. i'd say so so it it's so it's so um i mean it's just very interesting i think it's very cool to to kind of see i mean in you know I don't even know what kind of, you know, dress or garb that, you know, people are wearing for that, but you can tell, you know, a lot of. Yeah. Um, well, to- like I never had, and I never bought any clothes at all. Actually. Oh, I didn't even buy this. Oli bought this for me. Mm. But Shout it's a peasant out, shirt. 
Yeah, no, I mean, it looks, it looks, um, it looks pretty good. I mean, you're right. I, I think you did mention that you don't usually dress up, um, thematically. You just, you know, you go and enjoy, but I think, uh, this year really, you know, catapulted you to really, uh, go in a little harder, it seems. So that's pretty yeah, so good. Yeah, now I gotta get it. Cause now I have, just have a shirt and a hat. So now I need an outfit, but, right. um, you can, a lot of people like Ariel specifically, he like you buy one thing every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to add on to your outfit. Uh, to, yes, yes. So the arsenal. Every year. Exactly. Yeah, basically. Exactly. Which is cool. Like he, he has a bunch of leather stuff that he got from there. Like he mm-hmm. has a leather pouch that he bought from there last year. And then like this year he bought a bracer. So it's just, you know, different things. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I when I met up with you guys, uh, I mean, up to that point even, I mean, I, I was woefully uh, underdressed, you know, not not indecent exposure, <laughs> but I mean like just not I was I wasn't, you know, in the theme of it, you know, I just wore just regular clothes or whatever. Um, also fine, nobody cares. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't seem, you know, whatever people are wearing, it's it's it, people just go with it and people are dressed, people are in character, you know, it's um it's it's yeah. quite fun. So um just okay. I mean, we gotta talk about the uh, <laughs> um we got to talk about the hat. I mean, what what is going on here? This is a uh... pirate hat. I'm really I've been wanting. A, well, I've been wanting a pirate hat, but some of them are really expensive. Like the ones that I saw, there's some it goes with like three hundred dollars, dude. Mm. Four hundred, five hundred, even. That's it's crazy. crazy. Stuff in general gets expensive there because I guess it's all handcrafted or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, this one wasn't so bad. Probably because it's not real leather. Um, it's like sixty bucks. But Perfect. specifically, it's a pirate hat mm-hmm. that has tentacles on it. Of course. Yeah, you can't That's forget that. Me. That's a good touch. Yeah. I can't even tell. Okay, anyway, uh, now that the hat's been shown off, I can remove that. <laughs> it's too big. It's too big. It just looks incomplete now. The look is just not there. I just feel like, uh, yeah, I don't know. You just need to showcase finest. it. Look at the peasant shirt. Okay. Yeah, we need to get you some of those. Uh, I think they call them the mage, mage trousers. You oh know? yeah, the the puffy pants. Yeah. Basically. So, um, I mean, so tell. I mean, you you kind of went through a lot of the kind of different activities that people can do. I mean, there's a lot of arts and crafts. There's a lot of you know games. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of food. Um, uh, we kind of met uh, at at some point like separately. Um, we kind of started doing our own thing when we first got there and then we met up at some point, but, um, yeah, just, yeah. Give me an idea of like the kinds of things that you guys kind of explored, um, on your own before we met up. Um, there's, I mean, a lot of it shopping, honestly, like most cons, right? Yeah. Um, what was it? We spend the most time at a woodworking shop called Talon and Claw or Clon Talon, something like that, but they Mm -hmm. do D&D stuff. Like Dungeons and Dragons mm-hmm, theme, mm-hmm. like woodwork. So dice vaults, so wooden boxes for your dice or a DM screen that they've carved out of wood. Or um, they also, ha- I didn't notice if they, they had it last year, but tarot card box, so like a deck box for tarot cards that they made out of wood. Um, but they also have like dice. They mm-hmm. made they make their own dice as well. Well, dice uh, are important. for the Yeah. It was very big in the Renaissance, dice. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Who would have guessed that a polyhedral, you know, <laughs> with a dodecahedron? Is yeah, that probably, was, yes. Is that 20-sided? Um, who would have known that such a, it would be such a powerful item this far in the future? Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, okay. Like a bunch of stores had dice. It was interesting. Um, but, I mean, even as you walk in, like, you see random things, just people, actors, uh, mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. there. Like, there was a guy who was walking around, had, it was a nemesis for hire. Uh, he was just a guy dressed up. He had a duck on a, on a stick and, uh, Oli decided to hire him for free. Um, and he was just, they were talking shit to each other in lightheartedly. Like he was like, Oh, I hope you trip and fall. And everyone sees that and laughs at you. She was like, Oh, I hope you, they, you get your food order wrong next time you buy food. Uh, he's like, ah, yes. Well, I'll see you next week. I will be, I mean, nemesis for hire one day a week, every forever. Um, it's just super cute. And then there's the pollsters that you see walking around. Like on our way out, we saw pineapple on pizza, question mark. Um, 
yay or nay. Uh, on their way in, there was another one, but I wasn't. I don't know what they were keeping track of. There was some guy who had a made you look sign, and he. I don't know what it was, what he was saying because I we didn't pass we didn't stop for him. There's also like a tug of war that you could do with your friends, uh, which is pretty fun. It was always interesting seeing like how people would play. Um, what else? There's the bread. Very important. Only has to get a loaf of bread every year because it's artisan bread. I don't know. It's okay. It's like all of all of in time bread. She's very into it. Mm, okay. What you know, else? Park. Hmm? Go ahead. I was just going to say, like, parking took forever is what it was. We got what, there late. I was what, so mad. Oh, right. Yeah, we'll we'll get more into that, I think. Yeah. Um, but how to kind of navigate the... Uh, the, the space there and getting there. Um, you know, so we mentioned that there were a lot of people dressed, you know, thematically or otherwise, but yeah, mm-hmm. it seemed like particularly so, um, you know, our visit, I think you mentioned that there are different themes, um, yes. you know, depending on the week or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but, in this case, we saw some interesting characters, and maybe not even particularly related to uh, to the <laughs> Renaissance or medieval theme. I mean, what, what do you mean? Maybe you don't think Spider-Man was in the Renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> he very well could have been. Spider uh, Cowboy is what it was, honestly. Well, yeah. Try to remember, like, what? Um, I'm trying to remember what kind of characters we we came across. Um, like, for example, I mean, like. I told you that one of the first uh, one of the first ones that caught my attention as I was even entering in uh, was uh, Princess Peach. Um, oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There's Peach, uh, and then later down, I, we even saw like, well, I guess they're a different party, but there was a uh, Rosalina mm-hmm. and Koopa and Luigi, Waluigi. Group, ah, nice. But yeah. they were dressed in a more like old timey style. Okay. Okay. So they had like peasant shirts and the dresses were different. They weren't super, super like princess peachy. Right. Which was cool. Um, there was a, for anyone who watches critical role or has knows a critical role, it's like a, a live action, a live play D and D show. Mm-hmm. Um, there are people dressed as characters from that, uh, from the, the their player characters. Like, it was a group of all of the characters from season one, I see. which is really cool. Yeah. Um, There's also Free Ren. Uh, it's a it's an anime that that was big this last year uh, about like a high fantasy kind of adventure party. Uh, what else? Off the top of my head, those are the main ones that I saw. There were a few uh, Naruto characters, of course. Because uh, any con is going to have Naruto, I suppose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or Sasuke, in this case. I mean, I uh, I saw Abraham Lincoln. I missed him. I <laughs> was looking for him when you mentioned that. Like, I need, uh, I want to see this Abe Lincoln. He was, he was pretty, um, pretty on it. I mean, he had the uh, the whole thing, the tall hat, the the beard, um, and he was trying to, he's going all in character, um. I don't know. It, it was it was pretty fun, um, yeah. and there are also like people. Who is it? Uh, there are just people like dressed as a Star Trek characters as well. Yes, and no matter what week you go, there's yeah. gonna be some Star Trek folks because that's that would that was a whole episode, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty. Um, I don't know people's imaginations, obviously. Yeah, just, it's great. So um, it's um, it's fun. I mean, it's um, I mean, so here's the thing. It's a it's an event that's open to everyone, right? I mean, it's, it's meant to be a family friendly, you know, accessible, you know, event. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. Oh, I will say though, like they, last year they only had two theme weekends, which was pirate and con mm-hmm. convention weekend, which is what we went to this year. Yeah. Um, but they also have, um, they have, what is that one called? They have cottage core weekend. They have, um, there's another, they have like six, normally they have six themed weekends. Um, so I'm not sure uh, what they all are off the top of my head, but pirate is usually one of the busiest day or the mm-hmm. busiest weekend mm-hmm. because it's easiest to be a pirate. Yeah. Um, 
like there was a the Green Ranger who was the pi- the the swashbuckling version. Like they had a pirate one. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. So that was really cool. And I, I saw Jack Sparrow. That's Spider- right. I only saw one. Yeah. Jack Sparrow was there. Captain Jack Sparrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There was a Jesus. There was a Superman. That was interesting. I enough. didn't see Superman. I did see Jesus. I mean, remember he's omnipresent. I mean, he's all over. So. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That is yeah. true. <laughs> and he was walking to the bathroom. So yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important. Um, yeah. Oh, shoot. So um, before we move on, let's give a shout out to your crew because um, yeah, you had a whole you know you had a whole group with you. Um, who was yeah, with was, you? Let's see. It was me, Salem, Ariel, and Oli. Uh, we're the, we used to go every year as a group, mm-hmm. usually. Um, and then we met up with Sean and Courtney because they've never been. This was their first one. So I was like, oh, yeah, y'all got to go. It's fun. Y'all yeah. like nerdy, high fantasy stuff. Oh, yeah. So it was their first time, right? That's, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. But they were also dressed for the occasion, you know? Yeah, surprisingly. I was actually surprised. I didn't think they had two peasant shirts. Mm. Well, I mean, you know, beats me. I mean, I uh, just came in a a sweater and pants, so that's, uh, I don't know. And, and there's nothing wrong with that either. Exactly. Um, as far as activities go, um, I think one of the highlights, at least for me, and I think yeah, maybe you agree, I mean, you know, was, was the joust. Oh, yeah, um, the joust of the death. So I, uh, before we met up, I, I watched uh, the first joust of the day, and, um, you know, you had mentioned, you know, uh, you should really check out the last one, which we did. We ended up doing, but you know, the joust is, uh, what is that? It's basically two men on horses trying to stab each other. Right. I think that's yeah. really what it comes yeah. down to. Knights on horseback, just stabbing each other with lances. Yeah. I just want to say that, you know, in either, either event, I mean, I think what really, uh, surprised me for whatever reason is, um, people's infatuation with, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. with these knights, I mean, these, you know, these men on horses, I mean, in, in, mean? in their shining armor, I mean, I can, I can imagine why someone would be very interested and, uh, attracted to, uh, to that kind of thing. Look, these are the jocks of the middle of the exactly. middle ages, right? Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. are the NBA players of, of the time yeah. or the football stars or the whoever they are the specimens of humanity. <laughs> Yeah. Time. Yeah, exactly. The peak, you know, of, uh, yeah. of a physical, physical form and, and whatnot and athletic ability. So yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so, I mean, Everyone's I want, thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> Just what it is. Everyone's thirsty for them. Understandably so. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, I mean, like, um, so, I mean, there, there was like around a couple of, there's like, you know, there's, they, they do like a processional where, um, you know, they bring out all the, all the knights and they're like kind of fanfaring and they're giving like fan service basically, you know, mm-hmm. um, showing them off and whatnot. And then they take a couple of those guys and then they, they pit them against each other. They go through, you know, some scoring system and whatever, and you know, whoever gets the most points wins. And, you know, so it's pretty, it's relatively tame, you know, in that regard, you know, they just go at mm-hmm. it. They, what do you call those things that they use? The, uh, the lance thing, you know, those lances, I don't even know those long st- you know, the stabby yeah. sticks, you know? Yeah, I would call it a lance. Yeah, the long stabby sticks, you know, to uh, pierce their shields. You know, mm-hmm. and so that's fine. You know, they, they go through a few rounds of that. They rack up the points and they win or whatever. Um, but uh, I think it was the, uh, you know, the final, uh, the final joust of the day that that really is enter- more much more uh, entertaining. A lot more action going on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What, like, what what's okay, different so about it's it? It's really. a regular scoring system, right? But then all of a sudden, I don't know what I don't know if, who how they plan whoever's going to win or whatever. But uh, and then all of a sudden, one guy, usually the person who's losing, gets upset at the the MC, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. they start berating her at, as slowly as the as the as the show goes, and then eventually it comes to a head where, at least the, it, interestingly enough, this year was different from last year that I that. I, from the other years I, I saw because there was an actual prize up for grabs, <laughs> like the, the golden chain of whatever. Um, so like it was interesting seeing them fight for that, basically, because that, that was the whole point of the joust was for to earn the queen's favor. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. 
but then that, that chain would be the symbol of it. But um, yeah, the losing guy start they start being sore losers and then try to take it by force, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in this case, they uh, conveniently our side won because like how the the stadium I guess is set up is that each section cheers for a different is supposed to cheer for a different night, right? Um, uh, and conveniently our section's night won. Well. Each half gets two knights and their team, uh, so it counts. Uh, our knight was the the sun guy, but his part, his teammate, was the one who won. So I'm okay with that. Hmm. Okay, I mean, but just as a reminder, uh, we're not sitting on that side of the arena ever again because yeah, at that time of day, Chicago. yeah, it's um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, but uh, again, uh, yeah, it's a good. Uh, it was a good place to be as far as uh, the winning team. So yeah. And it was the, the just of the death, so everyone died except him. Right, exactly. But Very miraculously uh, able to spring back to life to greet everyone at the exit. So, oh yeah, I mean, thirst knows no boundary between life and death. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to greet with some of those horses. I think they're the real stars of the show at this point. Oh, uh, definitely, they're doing all the real work. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's pretty good. Um. So, I mean, there's, there's just so many, so many things to do. I don't even know, you know, th- you can't even list them all. I mean, you know, it's, uh, there's always just little, little treasures here and there as you walk through one other observation, I think, um, you know, I'd mentioned was, you know, I guess I was surprised that the layout in that, um, it's just kind of a, a one way kind of in and well, not yeah. one way, but like kind of an in and out kind of path, you know, you go one way in and then you have to backtrack your way out you know, to get yeah. out. It's not, uh, as opposed to a loop, right? A big loop. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you mentioned, you know, it makes sense that, uh, you know, that way it forces you to kind of explore the entire length of, uh, of the grounds. Um, yeah. so you can see what's there. Way out, you yeah. Buy stuff. Mm-hmm. If there's yeah. anything you saw that you were curious about at the beginning of the day, you know, you have the option at the end of the day. Yeah. But, uh, just as importantly, um, is uh, is the food uh, that they serve there, and there there is a lot. There's no shortage of of food, um, different types of food. A little trying to be a little thematic, but um, you mm-hmm. know, there nevertheless, there's there's a lot going on over there. Um, yeah. So I would say like about, I mean, as, in addition to like lots of little different stands that are sprinkled throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's like a big large area, maybe about halfway through. Um, you know with that's like the large food yeah, area the food court the yeah. food yeah ye old food court yes yeah exactly um it even has a stage there too which is nice because uh there's a guy there's a band there's like a three yeah. four piece band right with bagpipes a, a, a violin and yeah. a, a drum and something mm-hmm. else yeah and it was unironically good music no, they were. I mean, they're really skilled. They're playing uh, a lot of different like jigs and you know yeah. whatnot. It's uh, it it was uh, it was nice. It was uh, it was pretty good. And um, but as far as uh, as food goes, I know you guys. Uh, when I met up with you guys, you kind of mostly already gotten your food and um, kind of already had it laid down there. So, can you remember the kinds of things you know that you got? Yeah. All right. Well, for me, I picked up. The ye old bread bowl soup. Ye old, yes, of uh, course, yes, cheddar, very popular. And broccoli, apparently, mm-hmm. very popular in the mm-hmm. Renaissance. Uh huh. I guess so. And they also had loaded loaded chips, which is mm-hmm. nice. So basically, nachos, but with potato potato right. chips instead of tortilla. Right. Um, which is good. Always, always love getting that. Uh, Oli's go to like she that that's the sauce she went to is her favorite. She has to get it every year. There's a Scotch egg specifically. Mm-hmm. Is oh, what she yes. wants. It's like mm-hmm. a a deep fried it's a hard boiled egg that is then deep fried right uh, so that's always that's one of her go-tos then there's a raspberry fritter um which is another yeah, deep fried dessert thing and then cheese fritter more deep fried stuff um artichoke hearts which were also deep fried and delicious and i think she got something else I'm not sure, but then there's fish and chips. I know mm-hmm. Salem, Sean, and Courtney all got fish and chips, which is more deep fried stuff. Um, and then Ariel got 
he got stuff with Oli at the at the other booth with with the artichoke hearts. But I'm not sure what else he got. Um, and that's all that we as a group got. But there's other stuff. There's like turkey leg. There's a turkey mm-hmm. leg stall. There's a barbecue stall. Yeah. There's um, what was it? There's like a steak on a steak, which is basically <laughs> just beef on a stick. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Um, what else? There's also one. Oh, like the there was a was it a falafel place or it was? Um, I mean there was a, a Greek kind of themed uh, stand there yeah. too. Um, yeah. So yeah, like heroes and pitas and whatnot, mm-hmm. and falafel. Yeah. Yes. They, they also There's had no um, they also had poke the poke stand, which is obviously <laughs> very yeah they did. Um, and uh, as you know, uh, the pe- a real Renaissance man is, uh, you know, is uh, would eat poke. So it's- yeah, is that is that so? Yes, I don't know if I trust that because <laughs> this, this is all outdoors, right? So I don't know. I yeah, guess, I, I assume it's in like coolers, ye old coolers. I would um, hope. I would hope so. Yes, ye old uh, ice boxes, ye old uh, igloos, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I assume. But still, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Um, I, I don't think, there was a line? do you remember if there's a line? It, I don't it? think, I mean, was, if there, no, there wasn't really a line for it. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't, uh, as yeah. Populated as, uh, some of these other more familiar, um, other mm-hmm. stands, but yeah, as far as, um, you know, other food stands too, uh, that are throughout, throughout the fair, I was just trying to recall some of these, they had like things the for the roasted nuts, right. They had, uh, yeah. um, the f- like a the fudge, fudge. they had fudge yeah. they have uh that garlic that garlic uh shop oh, stand yeah. um there's a hun- there's a honey store like honey it's, right it's different various honeys you're right exactly um, um, there's also the chocolate covered bacon or uh, strawberries uh, mm-hmm. yes chocolate strawberries with bacon bits if you want yes perfect yeah what what did uh what did you guys think of that i think it was good i mean it was chocolate covered strawberry you can't go wrong and mm-hmm. add bacon to it everyone likes like chocolate covered bacon is the thing so okay. i just add strawberry to that it makes it it's good it is good yeah okay and the strawberries were nice they weren't like sour which is important yeah you know um like in like i said so many things to do so many activities but one thing I really did kind of want to get into also, like I, like I said earlier, this is um, meant to be like a family, you know, friendly event. You know, it's meant to be, yeah, open for everyone. I mean, yeah. anyone can yeah. go old, young, whatever. But mm-hmm. it seems that there's a particular, I don't know, what's the word? Um, I don't know. What, what am I trying to say here? It's like there's a, there's a particular way of, um, of, of dress, I suppose, that... Uh, yeah, because this is old timey, right? Old, usually England, but because I think it's the English Queen, but there's Spain sometimes involved. Point is, I would also like to get into these uh, wenches, if you will. Um, there's, I think it's the corsets. Like, there's, just, it's just a common piece of attire for the time period. Um, yes, it's supposed to be a uh, you know an authentic, an authentic uh, you know part of the of the time period, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, to wear corsets and uh, things of that nature. But it seems that, yeah, it seems like that. I don't know. Is this an official kind of, uh, um, is this an official kind of way of going about it? I suppose. Is it, you know, the way it's kind of evolved um, or has it just always been there? Is it just kind of an unspoken kind of rule or is it, it, is it, I don't know. I mean, since I've been going, at least it's been a thing. Like, that's always just what it is. Like, a bunch of different shops sell corsets at the Renaissance Fair. Um, so I think it's always been that way, honestly, because it's a it is a common attire piece, right? Yeah. So what we what you bring up here, as you said, are um, you know, are the wenches, as we will. Now I forget. Is that a term we're just think we're just throwing out there just because, or is that actually a, an adopted uh, common? you know trays for, yeah. okay i mean that's commonly accepted in this context yeah okay yeah yeah so um it's so not you, derogatory if that's what you're asking not necessarily i'm just uh curious if that's the term that we're using here you know that yeah. other people I will mean, also use and understand oh, yeah. Okay. yeah like there's there's the whole there's a the whole show about the washing wenches 
It's well, just these ladies who wash clothes. That's right. So if you can define what a wench is, um, at least in the context of the Renaissance Fair, ye old wench. My definition is just woman, honestly. Okay, but I think there's a certain quality, I think, that is to be expected um, of a no, wench. not at all. Not at all, you say? No. I think any woman is a wench. I think that's just what it is. Okay. Why, what's the old Oxford Dictionary definition? No, I'm just, I didn't have to be a formal definition, but I'm just saying, like, what makes, what makes a wench a wench, you know, in this, uh, at the Ren Fair? All right, look, Collins Dictionary, a wench was a girl or a young woman in the past who worked as a servant or served people food and drink. Okay, that's fair. So a woman who provides a service. Okay, well, we have, um, we have many people providing various services, um, so there's a serving wench, there's a washing wench, there's, I don't know. Okay. Oh, what? What? I mean, look, um, if you have a, if you, any of you have a chance to, to go out there and visit the Ren Fair, find your local wench and, um, and say hello, you know, I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's Red First is fun. Everyone, or not everyone, but like the, the people who work there, at least, they're the same character regardless. And that's mm-hmm. always, you know, you love to see it. I guess you'll have to see it for yourself. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. You never, you didn't have a drink at Lube, the, the Oubliette, did you? No, it was, uh, it was too, too busy. I think it was too popular. Yeah, that line's, that line just keeps getting longer and longer, I swear. I mean, there are but, a lot of thirsty people there, so. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Especially at the Oubliette, the best place to get a drink at the Ren Fair. Yeah. Um, well, not as much anymore because they had like they had better drinks before. But mm-hmm. a friend who's who's been going longer than I have, she told me that that act that alcohol company actually went out of business. They didn't survive the pandemic. Sadly, mm, so I see the drinks mm-hmm. are whatever now. Gotcha. I mean, it's still, they they have mead. It's okay, mead, but it's mm-hmm. not like you have mead's not a thing people drink normally. So right, know, right, it's there. Okay. Well, I mean, if people want to find, you know, make their way out there, um, you know, in this case, uh, the Ren Fair is out uh, in Irwindale, all right, at that yeah. Santa Fe Dam, like you said. Mm-hmm. LA and County, uh, uh, Regional Park. Exactly. Um, and so what would you, uh, what kind of um, tips, I guess, would you give to someone who's kind of visiting for the, for the first time? Out there. Have cash on hand. Cash is a lot of places are most a lot of the food places are cash only. Um, well, some of the like the the vendors usually take card, but if not, right. cash is just more important in general to have. A lot of all the drink, the alcohol locations are cash only. So yeah, that's very interesting. Um, I I wonder, do you know why that is? No, no idea. I mean, you know, um, maybe they just don't want to pay the. The extra fee, yeah, the yeah, fees. Ye, ye old uh, convenience fees, ye old transaction yeah. fees. The queen's tax, as they say. Well, That's no, right. it's queen's tax is just sales tax. I know it's crazy, um, but um, I yeah. do remember that if you, uh, you know, if you don't have cash on hand, you could always visit ye old ATM. Um, but there will be right. ye old convenience fee, you know. So and they're steeper than normal too. Like yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. So definitely, it's just better to have whatever, to bring cash beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you're not allowed to bring a water bottle, like a hydro flask or whatever, unless it's empty. You just have to prove that it's empty before you go in. Oh, okay. Um, so, you're not, so that you're not sinking in your own alcohol, right? But if you do, you bring one empty and then get fill it with water. Like it's just, it gets hot. Um, wear a hat. If you can wear dress lightly because it's usually pretty warm, although it yeah. get a little cold when the, when the sun was gone. Yeah. I think, you know, early on in the season, I think it's still relatively cool. We're still, you know, in springtime or whatever, but, um, I'm imagining, you know, it goes through what you said, uh, end of May or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The week before Memorial. Yeah. So it could get warmer then. So, um, yeah. but, um, 
you you had given some uh, advice on um, you know getting to parking over there. So yeah, so there's obviously yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, you got you said you got through in 15 minutes, huh? Well, I mean, I you got, got there before the line. I got there early, so mm. you know the event, the fair opens at 10, mm. and um, I got there at nine. So nice. Um, so there's obviously, you know, tickets and entry for the fair itself, but there is a fee to get into the, uh, that Santa Fe, you know, whatever, wherever yes, it's held. That's, that's the county's, uh, parking fee Ex- for regional parks. Yeah, exactly. So you pay that fee and then you, um, you kind of drive in and there, you know, even early on as you drive through, you'll see different parking lots, you know, mm-hmm. um, already. And the people already parked there. They may already have set up. They may already be, but you know, you kind of drive into farther in and you'll find, um, some parking that's closer to the entrance. Yeah. Um, cause it's still like, even though the rent fair is renting it out, that's, that's only part of the park. It's still open to the general public for the other parts. So I, yeah, I mean, it's such a large, you know, vast piece of land. I don't even know what else yeah. is there, but you're right. So other people can still be there. I know, um, um, they also do other events like on the side. I know mm-hmm. that they still, they'll still rent out parts. Uh, there's, I'm surprised there was one in on the water when we were there. Mm-hmm. Um, cause they do, LA County does a whole, like a, a rowing team kind of thing. And yeah. that's one of the practice locations. Oh, I see. So I'm surprised, I'm surprised we didn't see any of that. I see. This okay. Year. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, cause the water's nice. Like when, it, when you get to the part where there's all that water, like mm-hmm. it's, it's right at, at level and it's nice. It's a good picture for sure. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So parking wise. Yeah. I mean, I got there early, so it, it, um, I was able to get through pretty quickly, but, um, I know you came in a little later and, um, you know, how long There's did it hour. take you to, it took you an hour to get in. And, yeah. um, but Crazy. like I kind of, I think it kind of paid to, I mean, you have to gauge the timing of it, but, in your case, I think it worked out better for you because you got to park at a part that was closer to oh, the closer. actual entrance. So mine was a little farther out, not not that far away. But um, uh, for you, you just like walked across like a couple of rows and you're there mm-hmm. already or something. Yeah. Um, so well, I will say, though, they upgraded the whole parking situation this year. Um, now it's just one line. I mean, like that's closed a, off. that's an upgrade. I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it used to be a free for all um, mm. where like because, you know, the entrance, right? You turned right to go in. Yes. It used to be you could also turn left and then you, if per, the person on the perpendicular street could go straight through. Um, so basically, if you went the perpendicular uh, road, you'd cut most people off because they would have to be waiting to turn. But you could just go straight when it's your green and you're not fighting with anyone else going in. Uh, they took that option away. Now it's just one line, so everyone has to get in that long ass line that loops right. around right. the city, basically. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, uh, get it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a, it sucks for me because I used to always go the perpendicular roadway because mm-hmm. it was always the faster way to go. Um, but, and I was expecting to do that this year to save like half an hour on the parking time. <laughs> but I guess that we had to go all the way around, back in the line kind of thing. Yeah, that's too bad. I'm sure it was meant for maybe more control, right? Better to yeah. Oh, definitely. Because mm-hmm. like again, people would be blocking the intersection, making that turn because they're like, "I've been waiting this long. I'm not waiting any longer." Kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. For the for the lights change, so it was it was bad. It's better for the road, I guess. Like it's you know, no no more clogged streets. But like my convenience is gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I did mention, I, I, I talked to John on my way out and the parking, mm-hmm. you know, uh, leaving was also, you know, pretty, yeah. pretty bad. Right. Yeah. So, um, I called him, uh, a little bit in and I, and I told him and I'll get into it, but I told him that uh, I have this, um, dislike, this hatred for towards Mazda drivers. Um, <laughs> and he, he is one for the people who don't know he's. He has a Mazda. So, um, um, and and the reason was, you know, so again, in in the main parking area, um, the large, basically the big, large lot, the dirt lot, Mm -hmm. if you will, you know, it's just, it's one big area that's segmented, right. In, you know, segmented, um, with the different like lanes that people turn into for them to exit. Right. 
So um, everyone's obviously going towards a certain way, you know, they're turning into that lane and all those lanes meet up at one big lane to get out of there or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, in my particular case, you know, I'm trying to, um, I'm turning uh, left into this lane, right? Um, And of course, cars are already stacked and already packed in that lane. So um, I'm trying to turn and uh, I was waiting at that spot already for like a good 10 minutes or something, you know, trying to get in there, which is crazy, you know, because in addition to the cars moving, there's also pedestrians and stuff that are crossing through. Anyway, so there's this first car, this Mazda that's on the kind of the opposite side, also turning in. So they'd be turning Mm -hmm. right into that lane and Mm -hmm. in like uh, 20 seconds, they managed to like turn into that (laughs) lane before I did. Right. What? And then, uh, and then shortly after there's a second Mazda that was in that lane already. And, um, I, I had a chance, you know, had a small pocket to try to get in there. Um, but unfortunately I think there was someone that was crossing, uh, that was crossing the, you know, whatever. So, uh, I think the Mazda took that chance to close the gap and deny yeah. that entry. So, uh, I was very upset. And so what I ended up doing the uh the road was actually large enough technically it's a like a two-way road uh, it's not marked or anything but like it's wide enough where people um i just ended up going the opposite way of traffic and just really, really? going oh, the long way around like the back or something mm-hmm. um and it actually worked out better for me um okay. you know so i got there uh, i got out there i think a little sooner than the than those other guys so you just flipped okay. him a big one and just uh, <laughs> drove off. I'm not too surprised because um, usually exiting people are pretty chill about the whole zipper zipper thing. Like I maybe I don't have any problems turning. They could have been. I, I let people in as well. I'm just. They surprised. could have been, but I mean, you know, um, it just didn't work out for, for me. I guess. <laughs> but I like I said, I think it worked out better. Like I did get out there. I feel a little better, but but it it did take it did still take a lot of time uh, to yeah, get out there. I mean, I've one way to go usually one way ish to go and exactly have, like thousands of people exiting at the same time so just just keep that in mind you know just uh plan plan that into your uh your day i guess the time that you spend to get in and out of parking so yeah um it's crazy but uh yeah i mean overall i mean you know uh mazes aside i mean the fair the event itself is um definitely a lot of fun um you know both in things to do think people to see you know wenches to visit whatever it is it's um it's a good time good time uh for all so um i mean are you planning to go back again anytime this year you know this season i'm not i don't know only i think only wants to but i am not honestly like there's just i don't know once a year is enough for me. Like, what is that? What else is there to do? I mean, I guess there are a lot of different, like little shows that we didn't get to see this year. Right. Um, well, I imagine but, that uh, people that do go, um, I mean, they go there just because of the atmosphere and, you yeah, know, especially if vibes. you, if you dress, yeah, the vibes exactly. So, you know, yeah. that's, um, it's, yeah, but it, then that's another 40 bucks to 40 bucks entry fee. $13 yeah. parking. Right. <laughs> I mean, like those, I mean, just, it just depends if, you know, people have the, the disposable income to do that. I mean, uh, like, you know, I noted that there's a, a, a season pass, right? So there you is, could, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's yeah, there. I mean, Ariel for, used to do the season pass cause he mm-hmm. lives like half a mile away. So I know that's crazy. That's so crazy. He's so, yeah. um, so good for him. Yeah, so right. Convenient. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so anyway, that's, um, that's Ren Fair. Uh, is there any other thoughts that come to mind? Uh, for the people who are interested, the pub crawl, I, well, I don't know about now, uh, post-pandemic, but mm-hmm. pre-pandemic, the pub crawl was good because it was definitely worth the money. They do two a day. Um, you stop by every place to get a drink. Uh, you pay the entrance fee for the pub crawl or whatever, and then mm-hmm. every, you go to every location to get a drink without having to pay for it. Got Back it. in the day, it used to be yeah. good, good value. I don't know about now. Oh yeah. I mean, we saw a couple of those groups that were marching through. There's like, you know, their guide or whatever and just like announcing them, right? Like he would, you know, in those times you like, uh, I don't know whoever's doing that. They're like, make way, make way. Yes. Answering for the, 
yes for the ball if you will yeah um but yeah that's the point of the pub crawl they're supposed to, they want you to be as loud as and obnoxious as possible exactly so that's uh, part did, of the fun did you ever when you're did you ever uh, do any of it uh from years past i never did the pub crawl i don't okay. think i drink that enough to make it worth it honestly oh really okay all right i don't think so uh but obviously there are plenty that do so oh yeah i know a couple of people who've done it and they got they got wrecked and they said it was worth it <laughs> Um, yeah, no better way to spend a uh, Ren Faire than, uh, put the, yeah. So that's good. Yeah. I enjoy that. I enjoy that. So, uh, no, that's, um, I hope, uh, you know, I, I would consider to, to go back at least another time just to uh, take more of it in. Cause again, there is, there is a lot to do, a lot to see. So, um, it just got to go with, uh, just go with the right people, you know? Um, and then like every year it, it's slightly different, different vendors, different shows. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, that's always interesting seeing the differences. Yeah, absolutely. So that's Renfair. This, you know, topic wise. Yeah. This is, um, kind of a little off the beaten path, I think of what we usually talk about, but, um, it's still, you know, there's food involved. I mean, there's still, I, you know, so, you know, can't go wrong there. So, um, yeah. and, uh, you know, it's something that, you know, you, you enjoy. So I, I think uh, it's worth, uh, we're talking about. So, um, yeah, we before go to pirate weekend, that's the weekend. Do we what? A pirate weekend. That's what I was told. I've, I haven't been during pirates. So are pirates, do they exist in the Renaissance? I, I don't really do know. Mean? Of course they did. They were of already course. sailing to the new world at around the Renaissance time. And if they're sailing, you know, there's people trying to steal from other people. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of um, yeah the themes. Let me just take a look here. There's uh, yeah, pirates theme. I don't even know now. Um, yeah, cottage core. What else is there? Ren Con. That's when we went. Okay. That's it. I don't. <laughs> what? They only have three. <laughs> Pir- uh, there's cottage co- core. Cottage core. What is what is that? So you know, like, oh, that's the other one. Um, you know the um. Little House on the Prairie kind of look mm-hmm. like lots of, we'll, we'll say plaid and just very, like if you were out in a cottage in the woods or whatever, what yeah. how would, would that look kind of thing? I see. Cottage court be. Huh. Okay. Well, I uh, like I said, check it out. Okay. I think that's really uh, what it comes down to. Check it out um, and see for yourself, uh, wenches and all. So, um, yeah, the before <laughs> uh, before we uh, before we move on, um, let's take a quick break, shall we? Hey, food friends, are you tired of flat root beers? Barks, the OG with the kick since 1898. Bold flavor, a touch of caffeine, perfect anytime. Burgers, Barks cuts through the grease. Pie sweetens the deal. Summer chill co- or cozy fire, Barks is your drink. Ditch the dole and grab the bite. Use code DUMB for 15% off at insert website here. Barks, because thirst shouldn't be boring. All right, well. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's it's all go. finally paying off. It really is. Um, the other thing we wanted to uh, discuss is all what I consider kind of, um, I don't know, almost like an event in itself, but um, but it's kind of a year round kind of deal. And it's actually a uh, at a supermarket um, sometime last year, late 2023, uh, a new location for um, the you know Mexican grocer Northgate Gonzalez opened this spot called, uh, Mercado, Mercado Gonzalez, basically. Um, and it's a large indoor market. Um, it's just large space. I think it, they said it's like 70,000 square feet. It's, it's just really big. Um, just like a big old Walmart, you know, like a super center Walmart, Mm -hmm. but, um, it's, it's really laid out in a, like a, like almost like an, a large open air market, um, with different food stands known as puestos and there's different types of seating patio seating and whatnot and um, this is out in in Costa Mesa so out in the OC um, it's a Northgate market but it has all these other qualities all these other features of of the Mercado 
And, um, you know, you'll find things of your typical grocery store, your produce, right? Um, you'll find a section of different aisles with all your typical groceries. Um, but then you'll see scattered throughout, you know, a, a path of travel for these different, um, different food stands. And we're talking about different types of foods from like carnitas, you know, to uh, mariscos, to, um, you know, tacos, uh, ice creams, things like that. And one particular um, a food that uh, was technically a follow up to um, uh, some of our conversation previously um, with um, from our uh, whole Bosch episode. Um, but there's there's definitely like these different. Um, yeah, different stands that serve different types of, you know, prepared foods um, in in this large space. And it's actually very, I mean, it's very exciting, honestly, like, you know, for a supermarket outright. <laughs> and um, I mean, just for any place to visit. I mean, if you want, you know, um, actually, you know, good quality food um, at, at re- you know, good prices. I mean, this is uh, this would be a place to go. Um, as you, so the Mercado, you know, it sits, it's in a large shopping center, you know, so there are other shops there as well in this large plaza, but the Mercado is, it's obviously its own store, but, um, you walk in and there are a couple entrances, but I think the entrance that most people will go, you'll be greeted kind of in this large open space where you'll see, um, various, um, produce stands. Uh, like different, yeah, different places for like, yeah, different produce. Um, but then you'll also see like to your right, you'll see like, a, um, oh man, the, it's, uh, it's escaping me already. Like, um, I'm going to edit this out. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, you know, uh, no packed, uh, tortillas, you know, things like that. Uh. Um, you'll see a stand for it. yes, towards uh, kind of towards one side, one end of of the uh, the market is um, you yeah, had like a Sinaloa style sushi, which is uh, which is interesting in itself. Um, but there, yeah, I think actually the the uh, the store uh, the the store's website provides a map of you know the different uh, places that um, that you can kind of explore. Um, but uh, yeah, so. Tortillas on one side, you've got agua, fresca, uh, agua frescas on the other. Um, you've got your like carniceria. It's 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 just quite um, you know it's just nice the fact that it's so wide and open. Um, there's a lot of space to walk around and explore, but then you'll also see that there are there's like outdoor seating. There's common indoor seating as well. Um, and again, we I mean I haven't at least I haven't been to Mexico city. Um, but, um, it, I think it would definitely remind someone, you know, has been to like these open air markets and, uh, things out there. It'll bring a touch of that, um, here. And, um, so, you know, I, I had to take a visit and try out a few things. And, um, so I just wanted to kind of, you know, see what, you know, kind of go over, you know, some of those things. Um, one of the first, you know, items to try, uh, was, uh, a plate of guisados and those are usually like the stewed meats. So there's a, uh, there's a stand there that, that serves guisados and, um, they also serve chilaquiles, uh, it's a breakfast food. So I get there before 11 or something, you'll get your, uh, your fix of chilaquiles, but the guisados are there. Uh, this was a pork, you know, like a green sauce. Um, and you can, you know, different types of sides to have it. I had it with, um, some, uh, cucumbers and, uh, refried beans and, uh, they serve it with tortillas as well. So it's a decent plate. I mean, you know, um, it's really filling and, you know, there's just, uh, it's just, a, it's just a good, um, good way to start off. Um, but so most of these, uh, most of these stands are, you know, already open or they'll be open and they're open like every day. So seven days. Um, so some might be op- start a little later than others, but, um, you know, it's a good chance they're all, they're going to be open throughout, throughout the week. Um, and then, you know, I kind of walk across and get some, uh, like some riscos. I think like, um, I think it was, a 
a ceviche in this case, you know, like kind of a, with a little bit of mango and um, in there. But um, yeah, so um, from there, then, uh, oh, I, I needed something sweet. So by accident, as I was looking before I had um, before I'd uh, gone out there, um, I was just kind of looking and seeing what's there online. And I kind of came across by accident that they're one of the stands, uh, I think one of that they highlight is, um, is, uh, I forget the proper name, but, uh, basically the churros from El Moro. And we talked about El Moro from, uh, our talk with, uh, John and Daniel when they visited mm -hmm. Mexico city. And, uh, that's one of the, basically like the premier, um, you know, places that they, they talked about probably a very popular place that people visit in Mexico city for their churros. And so I think it was surprising to see them here, um, at the Mercado. And so, um, again, I haven't been to, uh, Mexico city, so I don't know what to compare it to, but, um, I think you'll agree, my child, that, uh, uh, it's always, I think it's, uh, always a time for a, a good churro, uh, when you can find it. And I got to tell you, it was a, it was really good, super crunchy, you know, nice and nice and hot. And, um, uh, it's just, um, I don't know. It was just something that was, uh, really worth going into. And then you just pair it with like, you can get, you can buy different sauces. You can have it on its own, but you know, I got like a, a dark chocolate sauce with that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, they're just serving it fresh. They're making them there on site and, um, there's definitely, uh, depending on the time of day, there, there can definitely be a line. Um, but it's, uh, it was an unexpected, but pleasant surprise to, uh, to know that they're out there. Cause I think when we had discussed it, we thought they were farther, more South Orange County, but, um, at least for me, it's uh, a little more accessible. So, mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a, a, a place worth going to. And then right across from there is, uh, um, you know, pasteleria, so you can, um, obviously, you know, definitely like a lot of different baked goods and pastries and things, namely, you know, a lot of conchas and things. So, um, conchas, bolillos, you know, you name it, um, and other, other baked stuff, cakes and whatnot. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a whole like section of, uh, you know, uh, you know, alcohol and drinks, like a, just like a huge, section of just uh just that alone just dedicated it's very um, important very important i mean it's uh it's really something else um you know i'm just one guy so it was uh unfortunately it tried to conquer you know that whole that whole place is uh is a little challenging but i think i think there was enough to to try and appreciate um in that one you know that one visit um i think one of the other things i had was a uh like the paleta, which is like the, you know, the ice cream bars. So, oh, okay. um, yeah. So just, uh, have that as well. So, um, there's, there's a lot to try. I mean, you could spend, you know, a good few hours over there, you know, just hanging out, you know, just, and then if you, you realize you need groceries, you can, you can stop by there too. You can pick up some on the way out. So, um, it's just nice to know that, uh, you know, there's a place like this that exists. I think this was, um, uh, definitely like a bold kind of, uh, move a, uh, uh, ambitious kind of thing, but I think it, um, I hope it pays off. I think, I think they'll hang around for a good while and, um, it's just a different approach, oh, you know, on, um, on your, on, on, a, on a, on a market basically. So, um, there's a few articles we'll share about that, but yeah, there's, um, if you're out there or you want to make the trip out there, uh, that's, uh, yeah, Mercado, uh, Gonzalez out in, uh, in Costa Mesa. So, yeah. Um, so very, uh, there's just a lot, you know, out there. I mean, I think when it comes down to it, my child, there's whether you want, uh, whether from wenches, uh, to churros, you know, LA, LA's got it all. What do you <laughs> Yeah, you're not you're not wrong. You know, so um next time you want, you know, it they've got you covered. So um there are no worries there. So um I don't know. I, I hope uh hope you come out here and uh try some out. 
Yeah, man. Conscious all the way. Well, we've come to the end of, uh, of another episode, so I want to thank our few and only fans for joining us. We're excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and uh, good people. Reach out. Um, I'm on Instagram at Dumb and Hungry. He's at my underscore chow, where you can just uh, slide right in. You can email us at uh, hi at dumbandhungry.com, where you can leave us your feedback and your love letters. Find the videos on YouTube. Won't you like, subscribe, and smash? You can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. But not much, Al. And on your next food adventure, remember to try one of each. It's a good winch. <laughs> uh, <laughs>